Okay, today I'm going to introduce Simulatis, which is a simulation platform to support the design of lattice structure fabricated by additive manufacturing. So it's kind of like a simulation model so that you can use this model to do the simulation for lattice structure. It has four parts, the initial design, design optimization, design validation, and the property model. So the first model is the homogenization model. You can use existing topologies or you can customize the topology by yourself. Well, if you want to customize the topology, you have to give the input of your topology. But if you want to use the existing topologies, you just need to select the topologies here. So when you click the topology, you can see the figure of the topology to make sure it's what you want. So after you select the one topology, you can choose the resolution of the simulation. So generally, if you use a higher resolution, it will be more accurate, but it takes a long time. So I suggest that you can use around 30 to 40 so that you can get an accurate and efficient result. Well, the, the, the next parameter is the radius. So you can set the radius. The radius is to control the relative density of the lattice topology. As you can see here, well, if I set the radius and then I click generate voxel model, then the relative density will be calculated. You can see currently is 23%. So this is the relative density. If you think, okay, it's too low, you can adjust the radius to change the relative density. After we have the relative density, we can input the just modulus and the Poisson's ratio. So these two values are the material property of the solid material, which doesn't mean the property of the lattice. So which material you are going to use to fabricate the lattice, then you can give the property of that material. After that, by clicking the run homogenization, you will see. Okay, so now it's running and after it runs sev several iterations it will give you the results so here you can see we have a constitutive matrix and we have the yas modulus shear modulus Poisson's ratio but you can see here it has many results because for the lattice structure is anisotropic so it means its property is different along many directions so in order to visualize the result i also I also add the visualization module, so when you click view the Young's modulus plot, then you will see the result. As you can see here, so what does the result mean? It means the property in the diagonal direction is very strong, but in the absolute direction is very low. So by rotate this result, you can see it in different directions, so it's very clear. So this is the homogenization model. Then I will introduce the joint stiffening element model, which is used in the design optimization of the lattice structure. So first, uh, in this model, we need to find the stiffening coefficients. Why? Because in the lattice structure, if we want to optimize the lattice model by the beam element, it cannot consider the joint in the lattice structure, which will underestimate the stiffness of the lattice structure. So that's why I have a stiffening coefficients to compromise, to compensate for the stiffness. So let's see how we can find the coefficients. So first, we have to set whether we are finding the bending coefficients or the tensile coefficients. And the strut length radius as a characteristic of the lattice strut. For example, I already get my data. So if you want to know how to find the data, you can read my paper. So we can just uh, copy the data and into the software, like the x coordinate and the y coordinate. That means the property of the lattice strut with the joint. After we input this value, we can set the resolution for first one and the second one. What does it mean? So it means the resolution of the coefficient we are finding. So you have to choose a right value so that you can get the optimal coefficient. So after running this coefficient, we can find that there is the lowest point in this plot. So that is the 
optimize the coefficient for the bending stiffness. Then we can do the same thing. We'll do the same thing for the tensile stiffness. And we have another group of data. And we just copy the data and put it in the software so that we can get the, bending, the tensile coefficients. After we get the tensile coefficients, it will, show, it will be shown, as you can see here, it will be shown in the tensile stress and tensile length in the coefficient value. So after run, now we can have the tensile stress and tensile length. So now we can test the coefficient because we don't know whether the coefficient is accurate or not. So now let's test the result. So first we test the tensile and you can see, okay, the red point, the right line here, okay, the right line here as the result of a real actual lattice strut and the blue line is the simulation model. So they are, they are like a, have the same result, which means the coefficients are accurate. Then we can switch the testing method from tensile to bending to test our bending coefficients. And after do that, we can go to the simulation of the lattice structure. First, we can input the node list, the beam list, the load, and the support. So after clicking it, then a window will pop up so that you can select you can select the, select the node list and beam list. So this is to select the model. And uh, what's the format of this this uh, input file? Like for the node, it's kind of like we just uh, have uh, the coordinate of each node. And for the beam list, it gives the index of the node. For the load, we can decide which node we will add a force and for the support means we will fix which node. So these are just uh, some script. So you can also check my see my paper to see the format. Okay. So after we input those file and then we can give the material property of the of the material we are going to use and then we can run the model. After that it will give you the reaction force as a support point and and we can find that okay now this is a, a list displacement list for the node in the lattice structure so it can export the list as a as an excel so that you can check okay what's the displacement inside the lattice structure so that you can get the stress and next I'm going to introduce the hybrid atom model which is used to in the design validation stage. So what does it mean? Hybrid element means you can use both beam element and solid element together to simulate a solid lattice hybrid structure. So in, act, in reality, if we want to implement the lattice structure, we have to add it in the solid material because the solid material may have functional surface and functional volume. Maybe for assembly, of for some other functional purpose. So let's see how we can use the hybrid element model. So first, we can import a solid model. So here, I will import a solid model and I will show you, this is a solid material. Later we will use tetrahedral to mesh this solid model. Okay, so this is a solid we are going to use. Okay, after opening it, we can preview the solid in this window, in this preview window. Okay, this is solid we are going to have. And then we can import, we can import the lattice node and lattice strut. The format of lattice node and lattice strut is the same in the joint stiffening element model. So here we can have the model. Just back click it and then we can open it. So after we open the lattice strut and lattice node, there is a very important algorithm in this in this hybrid element model is to generate the RBE3 element. RBE3 element is a connection element that can connect the solid element with the beam element. So now you can see we have the lattice structure. 
and we have the solid, okay? But we don't have RBE3. Without RBE3, we cannot do the simulation. So now I'm going to import the tetrahedral for the solid. So the last time I import solid, it's just for preview, so it's STL format. But this time I'm importing mesh, so that's the tetrahedral of the solid. Then we can give the radius. The radius is usually the, the radius of the strut. It determines how many grids on the solid will be connected to the lattice for the lattice node. Then we can preview. We can preview the RBE3 as the blue point. Then you can we can review the blue point in this model. Okay, now you can see the blue point here. Okay, so you can decide wh whether it's correct or not because as you can see here, if it's in the wrong position, then we have to re like to check your model. Okay, so the last one is a as built with your property model. Why to have this model? The reason is that we know adding by factory have influence on the material property. So for the lattice structs, we have different orientation, different thickness, and different lengths. So for each strut, its material property might be different. So now we have a SBUILT material property model. We can test a group of lattice struts with different orientation, thickness, and length so that we can get the property of each strut. Then we can check the data here. So first we can select the manufacturing process. I have FDM process in the database. And then the material I have is PRA. Then we can select the strut thickness strut length. Then we can find the material property according to the angle. So we can do the same thing for other lengths. So you can find the material property is different for different angle. However, if we want to find a data that is not in the database, we have to use the interpolation function, which I already wrote in this software so that we can input the thickness input the length and input the angle well this angle is not like this data is not stored but it can be interpolated from the stored data now you can see the material property is 3465 so this is the result we have so now you can see we have four model three of them are the simulation model and the last one is a property model the property model can be used in the previous model, so first you can get the property, then you use it in the previous simulation models. So that's my software called Simulatis. Right now it's just a prototype, it's like a alpha version, so later I will add more functions in it, and you can download the software by the link below. And all the code are in MATLAB, so it's very easy to implement. Okay? Thank you for watching. Bye.